Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I thank the member for Castries East and Prime Minister for bringing this youth economy bill to the parliament. When I campaigned, Mr. Speaker, I promised the young people of VA for North new economic opportunities. Many of them, Mr. Speaker, I know, I mean, I know them very well, and many of them are well known not only in the communities around VA for North, but in St. Lucia for their creativity and for their prowess, whether it be in music, theater, culture, food, and so on. So when I campaigned, Mr. Speaker, I promised the young people that the St. Lucia Labor Party government would provide new opportunities for them. And I stand to support this bill also because many young people Mr. Speaker, were part of my campaign, and many young people assisted me as parliamentary represent as the candidate to bring the seat home to the St. Lucia Labour Party. I take very briefly, Mr. Speaker, to recognize some of them who are in the House today. And I wish, Mr. Speaker, at this time to, to really thank and pay homage to the president of the St. Lucia Labour Party Youth Organization, Ms. Shomian Popi. And, and Mr. Speaker, along with her, a number of the youth officers of our Labour Party Youth Organization who are here with us to witness the debate on this youth economy bill. They were very instrumental, Mr. Speaker, in the campaign. And I know that the young people in my constituency, and indeed all around St. Lucia, are looking forward to the enactment of this, this bill, this promise. But Mr. Speaker, before I speak a little on how I, be, how I, be, I think this bill would impact my constituency, I want to just address this issue, of, this issue which, which keeps coming up. The members opposite indicated that the programs are all around. Why you have programs in, in, in Belfond, you have programs in Ministry of Commerce, and why are you now creating a new youth economy agency? It's very clear to me, Mr. Speaker, that members opposite have not understood what drives economic growth and what drives economies all around the world. Mr. Speaker, there's a reason for the stock market going up and down. There's a reason for speculation. There's a reason for all of these things. And there's a big debate, as you know, Mr. Speaker, between economists and, and behavioral scientists as to what really drives economies. People like the Prime Minister and the member for Ancillary, whom I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, are on the side of the pure economists, will say to you that it's supply and demand and all of these things. People like myself, Mr. Speaker, I am more on the behavioral side. And I say to you that what really drives economies is behavior and feelings, how people feel. So, so in the next, there's a war in Ukraine, and they feel that gas prices will continue to rise. So they change their behavior. They spend less money. And that changes all the, dy the dynamics, Mr. Speaker. In Brazil, they are cutting down the forests, and the environmentalists are, are mobilizing all around, the, all around the world. If they succeed, people change their behavior. Look at what has happened to whaling. And in Japan right now, the, the whole economics around whaling has changed because of people's behavior and people's attitude. Now let's come back to St. Lucia. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, why, why do we need a separate agency for the youth economy? It's because, Mr. Speaker, young people, as we know, they're energetic, they're thinking out of the box, they don't think like us, they look at situations differently, and especially in times of crisis, COVID crisis, fuel prices increasing, Many young people are sitting at their homes in, in, in little corners on their phones and creating businesses that we don't know about. These people are creating solutions to, to the problems. And therefore, you know what? If you bring all of these people under one umbrella, the synergies begin to happen. It's almost like Silicon Valley. Why are so many of these experts from India and from all around the world, they gravitate to Silicon Valley? Why you think? Because 
you, you think it's because there are mountains. There are mountains everywhere, and there are rivers and things. But they gravitate there for synergy and for the, the, the likeness of minds. Look, look, Mr. Speaker, look at Hollywood. Why do you have in the United States of America all the actors, most of them, the directors and the playwrights and so on, they gravitate to Hollywood. Why? You think they can't stay in Miami or wherever and, and do what they do? But most of them, most of the great ones, they gravitate because of behavior, because of synergy, because the synergy of their work, they, they, they can find contact easily. So in the youth economy agency, when young people come together, it's been run by young people, managed by young people. There are synergies that are developed, Mr. Speaker. So that is why, that is why we need a separate agency for the youth economy. And Mr. Speaker, it has happened before. I remember in 1997 when the Labour Party government came to office and the, the, the member for Viva South was Prime Minister, we had people like the former Minister, Honor, former member of Parliament, Minister Rambali and Damian Greaves and them. And there was all this talk about, you had FRC, you had cultural activities all over the place. They created a new agency, the CDF, and they brought minds together. So, they, so you have synergy. And the synergy has a way of multiplying simple things into great ideas. So what will happen with this youth economy, Mr. Speaker? What, what will happen is this. Young people, even though they are not part of the management of this agency, or they are not part of it, there's a vibe that will flow in the country that there is an economic engine that belongs to us. There's a vibe. So it's not only about structure and about organization and which office doing this and which bell fund doing that. There's something about synergy and vibe in a country that, that propels economic growth. The create if, look at what happened to Carnival. Look at what happened to Carnival. And everybody say, boy, the thing was well organized. And the shows were thing and so on. You, you know what has happened, Mr. Speaker? There's a vibe, I don't know about this one. There's a vibe which has been created. And so that is what I think the separate agency, the separate agency will do. So Mr. Speaker, young people will gravitate to this. And not just to an office, but to an idea. To an ideal that, boy, this government has put something there for me. And just that, this government has something, the hope that is in that. This government has something for me as a young person. It doesn't matter where I come from. I can, I can get $5,000 to start a little braiding thing. And I can have a chair. And if I need plywood to, to put on my mother's house so I can start braiding. You know how many applications we have in the Viewfort North office already, Mr. Speaker? For people who are braiding, and they, they can only braid in them in their mother's living room. And they have a lot of clients in Bellevue, Pierre. I know so many of these young people. They are braiding, they are doing wonderful work, but they are doing it in the balcony or in their mother's living room. You know what? They cannot afford immediately the sink. Or, so all they need, they, 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 their parents have given them permission. They want to put a little piece on the house. They can paint it nicely, put a sign, and have their sink and everything. One time, this becomes a business. And you know what, Mr. Speaker? They now employ somebody, maybe part-time, every weekend in the first instance. And when they grow their business, they now employ one person, and then it grows. And then, slowly, in my constituency, if you have 50 of these people, then you develop 100 jobs. That is what we are going to do with the youth economy, Mr. Speaker. That is what we are going to do. Because, Mr. Speaker, Samu Kadia say, nous avons développé un programme spécial pour les jeunes qui sont ici. Et fait, nous avons une opposition qui a dit, oh, un tout programme, là, nous avons fait ça. Nous avons fait ça pour faire un différent programme. Je dis, ça pas vrai, Mr. Speaker. Et si nous avons fait ça, nous avons fait ça, comme Miss Popi, avec tout. C'est mon au lieu de y a jeunes monde qui là qui gourmet avec les bas partis, jeunes monde qui ni sagesse et qui ni couai, y a ça fait différents bagages. Et ça nous cadia, c'est jeunes monde voter ben nous, avec jeunes monde mettre nous en gouvernement aussi, avec la nia chaque monde qui voulait jouer en opportunité à sa faire économie, avec tout partout y a passé, tout partout y a tourné, 
yo ka jwenn moun ka mande yo hototo papier pou yo jwenn anti 5000 dollars ou ben 2000 dollars pou yo ouvre anti baba shop sa mwen kade ami se spika youf ekonomi sa la ka y fè se moun sa la vin ansanm ek travay ansanm pou yo jwenn rezolta so mr spika when i campaign mr spika from piero savans there are people like kevin and paul into agro processing son from piero alicia mathre who does sushi mr speaker you can come down for some jilani morfat jilani morfat mr speaker many times he's the one who, who, who trims my hair the cmos farmers the cmos cmos processors mr speaker Many people in this in this room go to Fraser at Opico in Vie for North. Fraser rap, Fraser for raps, and Yonli, Yonli Taylor the driver. Tourism and water related recreation activities, the tour guides at Bellevue, Opico, and Piero, Mr. Speaker. And what about young people in in performances? We have spoken with the principal of the Piero Combined School, and. Very soon, Mr. Speaker, this wonderful yard at the Piro Combined School. We intend to turn it into an open air performance area. And the Minister for Tourism is very interested. He always troubles me about that, about performance areas in VA for North. But we will certainly speak to the Catholic Church and the Minister for Education to ensure that this happens. Mr. Speaker, I want to indicate at grace people like Nadia Shalry, who's a great cook. Janik Asso, Janela Shalry, who does give baskets, Ned Mitchell with his car wash, Kenya at Vevercel, <coughs> Vanessa Aldoza, and you have heard them before, the Vietwizin boys, and, and, and Zilon with, with Camp Venture. We have a wonderful camping activity in Bellevue, Mr. Speaker. You must spend an, a weekend down there. Keitha O'Brien, Antonia, and so on, the artists, and so forth. Mr. Speaker, there are so many young people who are just waiting for this opportunity. At VJ, the young people who are into cassava making, and so many of them are in, at grace, Mr. Speaker, the farmers, and in sports, we have some of the, we have the best football clubs in St. Lucia. We have only been beaten by Viewfort South a few times, but we are coming for them, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, there are so many opportunities. Just over the weekend, Mr. Speaker, I was pleased to be in the constituency of Miku South. And, you know, they, they had a wonderful football competition there, Mr. Speaker. And our teams from VFO North did very well. The Young Roots Football Club from Greece won the competition. And the Veterans Football Club, the Viewfort North Veterans Football Club, Play second, the finals was between Hufort North and Hufort North. You misleading the house. <laughs> I'm misleading the house, Mrs. Uh, <laughs> a wonderful activity. So we have we have endless opportunity, Mr. Speaker. And I want to tell the young people, all those who have applied from V4 North, we, we, we have a pile as as thick like the Minister for Finance is not there, but we want to ensure, Mr. Speaker, that we get our fair share and that our people are ready to embrace this. And let us change the thinking you see it's the thinking so because it's already in commerce it's already there it's already there you know do the same thing over and over again but we have 30 something percent youth unemployment but you know, we've been doing that for years and years and we still have 30 something percent youth unemployment we have to do something different we have to cut the chase and get the young people the help which they deserve and they need so i support this mr speaker and let us create synergies and let us get this aspect of our economy moving and let us see how we can improve the lot of our young people in St. Lucia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.